area of coverage is what's going on in Florida, which is in very sharp contrast to what you just heard from Giuliano. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, the situation briefly, and then briefly again, the mitigation uh, in part, and then uh, in later talks, I'm going to cover some other topics. Okay, the topics for uh, discussion are the production situation, which I said again is in sharp contrast, our unique challenges in terms of nutrition, I'll talk about at length, and then some few strategies to control psyllids in young plantings that uh, are appearing to have some uh, possibilities for, for contributing. This is uh, the situation that uh, is, again, in large contrast to what has happened in Brazil. And that is, after the hurricanes, when HLB was discovered, uh, we had this drop in production immediately due to that uh, loss. And then we went uh, for uh, eight or nine years with no really large change in production. So this, this created a false sense of security with regard to what HLB losses would be as we predicted as uh, those knowledgeable in disease. We said that these uh, types of losses would be uh, large and immediate, but they were not. They were, there was a lag of about eight years. But when these losses began uh, to be manifest as fruit drop, then uh, we saw a catastrophic decline in uh, the uh, production. And even more so this past season, we had a hurricane. Uh, in September, right at the time of the beginning of harvest of the early variety. So an additional loss there uh, of 20% this past year. So what is happening with this uh, loss of production has to do with the way the bacterium infects the tree after transmission. It has to do with the movement of the bacterium down to the fibrous roots and that infection below the ground before any symptoms above the ground causes a 30 to 50 percent loss of root density. Those are the roots that do all the work in, in, far, in terms of taking up water and nutrients and, and some of our systemic pesticides. And that's before symptoms. After symptoms progress, we have an additional loss uh, of roots we call phase two of 70 to 80 percent, depending on how much that tree continues to decline without any sort of mitigating uh, management. So that's the explanation for the yield loss. That root loss and the yield losses that we uh, measure are very similar. Sorry. That root loss leads to a very important loss of the capacity of the root system to take up water and nutrients. Uh, here we have the illustration over the time that the incidence of HLB increased very rapidly from 2009 to 2012. We see a very uh, dramatic drop in calcium and magnesium levels in tissue as, as uh, measured here every month in this particular farm or company uh, likes uh, citrus uh, uh, kindly provided this information. Calcium and magnesium are macronutrients, and I think they're too much overlooked, particularly in Florida, as very important to supply, not just in an HLB situation, but in all situations. So they, their importance has been greatly underestimated. So what happened with nutrition in contrast to what happened in Brazil is that uh, the growers uh, abandon uh, tree removal as one of the inoculum uh, control strategies. Our psyllid management was not at the level that it is here in Brazil in terms of frequency of sprays and efficacy of those sprays. Uh, there was a visual response to uh, what I call the enhanced foliar nutrition program. And this sort of, again, lulled the uh, growers into a false sense of security that they were in some way controlling the disease and they were not. They were not reducing the damage, they were not reducing the yield loss. What that ended up in a, in a very uh, short time, uh, 2012, was a very high incidence of infection in, in trees and in the psyllids, well, psyllids and the trees, both. And this rapid increase was more or less in an exponential type of way uh, leading to 100% of the grows infected by 2012 and then at present uh, 
virtually 100% of the trees and the uh, psyllid vectors are infected. We discovered uh, that management of things that we had not managed before was very important. And one of those things we've identified clearly is uh, bicarbonates in the soil in terms of soil pH control with lime, and then uh, bicarbonates in the water as a natural product of our lime, lime, uh, uh, high lime uh, aquifers that supply the water for irrigation. So here we see a history of low uh, liming history and high liming history and a very different uh, appearance of the trees uh, about seven years after. These are trees on the swingle, a very sensitive rootstock to bicarbonate. And you can see a very different manifestation, expression of the disease. On the right, uh, high pH, the, the trees have already been harvested because they were dropping fruit at a very high rate. And then on the uh, left, you see trees that look relatively vigorous and productive uh, despite HLB infection. So we set about to develop uh, management strategies to uh, mitigate this uh, bicarbonate in soil and water. And a lot of this has to do with, uh, again, best management practices has been developed here in Brazil, have also improved in Florida in terms of the use of fertigation, irrigation with fertilizer injected into the system uh, to supply nutrients in a way we call spoon feeding and to compensate for this lower root density. This is a very important objective, is to sustain water and nutrient uptake with uh, literally half the root system lost that takes up uh, water and nutrients. And a way of facilitating or increasing that efficiency of uptake is to reduce soil pH and bicarbonate stress. That's a very important stress that we've now found experimentally. And to do that, we uh, acidify the water or we acidify the soil uh, using sulfuric acid and, and other types of uh, acids. And the soil conditioning has uh, very much to do with the use of uh, sulfur. Broadcasting sulfur is an acidifying type of activity as well. Now I'm going to shift uh, very immediately to a couple of the management tactics to uh, repel psyllids and reduce the early infection of the trees in our groves. This uh, information comes from Bob Adair, my colleague at the uh, uh, Florida Research Center for Sustainable Agriculture. And it was presented at the 2018 Citrus Show. And this is a tactic that's been uh, developed uh, in Florida, but it's been adopted here in, in Brazil. So you are, some of you are aware of this already. And what this is, is the use of a metallized reflective mulch to repel the psyllids that's installed at the uh, the uh, pre-plant at the stage before trees are uh, planted. And in this uh, particular experimental uh, approach, you're comparing with a mulch uh, activity that's an organic mulch, that is uh, a material that's broadcast on the ground and covers the ground just like the uh, reflective mulch does. And then you have a non-treated control. And this is the development of that, uh, that area that, of the trial with grapefruit over the uh, first uh, three or four years. And you can see uh, differences in tree growth over time that I'm gonna go into some detail to describe the magnitude of. But most importantly, this repellent activity is reducing the amount of uh, adults uh, and uh, psyllid nymphs and psyllid eggs. And it's uh, working in a, in a very, uh, substantial, sustainable way, as long as the mulch is reflective. And I don't have time to go into how the mulch loses its reflectivity, but with reflectivity, you have this uh, decrease in uh, psyllid infestation. And as a result of that, and this is for two different seasons, these measurements, and as a result of that, you have a, a reduced development of HLB incidence in the block in the early stages of the uh, grove's development. This is very important. This delay in infection is very important. It's not preventing, but it is delaying the infection process by the psyllids, the transmission process. These are the PCR uh, numbers, percentages of incidence. And importantly, this uh, delay in infection is leading to a very 
dramatic increase in, in tree, product, tree growth and productivity. Here is the tree volume, canopy volume, over time, uh, 2015 and 2016 measurements, showing a very large increase uh, in the metallized mulch treatment, a somewhat lesser increase with, with organic mulch, which has benefits in and of itself in supplying water and nutrients more effectively and more efficiently than compared to bare ground. Here's tree size uh, response that you can see is, is dramatic. So again, these delay, this delay in the infection process, the development of disease symptoms is, is very important in productivity of the grove in the early stages. Here are the first and second crop comparisons. Again, a very large increase by about uh, two to three times, depending on the season. And it's sustainable over the, at least the first uh, two years of uh, bearing of, of grapefruit in this case. Now very quickly to another management tactic that's not so far along in its development, but it's not something new. It's something that Hanato Bazanezi uh, told me that you were exploring, uh, that he was exploring back uh, almost 10 years ago. And that is the use of a net bag, uh, a screen bag that's much like the screen that's on nursery enclosures to exclude psyllids uh, for individual trees. Now, the, the, the innovation here is that these bags are, are manufactured in China from, product, from materials from China by Chinese workers, and they're extremely well made. They're very durable, and they can, be, uh, they can sustain uh, the, the years of use and then even be reused after two years of use in, uh, in plantings at, at time of planting. And the uh, particular uh, name they, the company has given to this uh, bag is called the Tree Defender. And I think, it, it, you know, the, the way it works is very obvious. It, it excludes the psyllids and allows the trees to, to develop uh, a healthy uh, root system and shoot system, canopy, and even increase canopy growth under the bag because you have shading effects on, on canopy growth, tree growth. And again, the Defender bag is durable. It, it's lasting well and for multiple years and probably multiple uses. So when you look at a model of what the, this potential production increase is, it's much like what I saw, you saw with metallized mulch. That is, it delays infection. In delaying infection, say, for the first two years, you have a, a very large early increase in production. So much like what was shown with metallized mulch, you're going to see with this sort of protection of the tree in the first two years with the bag. And the economic advantage is quite large, as you saw uh, previously with those uh, slides of tree size and tree production. That there was a model developed, uh, not mine, of my own making, but a model that can uh, take all the inputs, uh, different uh, parameters, and put them into the model variety fruit quality, fruit value, et cetera. And with those calculations from that model, the prediction is that you're going to have a very large increase in profitability of the block by delaying infection just for the first two years. So with that, uh, I just describe a few examples of, of early uh, tree production and delay of the infection process. And I'll have more to add with my uh, talks coming up. Thank you very much.